What's up guys, Network Wiz Kid here and today we're going to go through what it takes to deploy a Firepower FTD device in transparent mode. Now this is uh, part of some training that I am doing um, in regards to the CCIE uh, slash CCMP security um, and this is one of the topics on the blueprint. So. I've decided what I'm going to do is in aid of my learning and also helping uh, to continue deliver content um, I will um, put together these videos where necessary and um, put these out on my YouTube channel so please feel free if you have any questions comments um, I want to discuss anything you know drop me a uh, line in the comment section reach out to me on Twitter Instagram or any of my social media platforms and also my website networkwiskid.com if you found this video useful please like and uh, subscribe and if you want to stay up to date with the latest videos that I release especially around the uh, CCIE related material uh, please do hit that notifications tab um, so that you will be kept up to date with all the latest videos that I post so the structure of this today is we're going to go through a um, brief overview of uh, transparent mode uh, before we go into a lab and we actually configure a FTD device um, and join it to the FMC with um, with transparent mode. So this is the um, this is the same theme that the upcoming labs and uh, demonstrations will take. Um, the main point of this is not to discuss uh, the topics in great detail because there's configuration guides, there's certification guides, there's white papers etc already out there so I don't want to do that because I've gone through that as part of my training so that I, you know that's uh, your job to go through that the main purpose of this video is to uh, actually show um, the, the configuration aspect of it and especially for those that can't access um, this, this sort of equipment um, to help them with their with their studies as well. So let's jump straight in. So I've got some main points here, and again, as I say, these are just uh, main points that I've picked out. Um, it is worth covering the uh, blueprint topics by using the certification guides and um, Cisco white papers, etc. Um, but the main points that I uh, have pointed out for this session are the following. So with transparent mode, mode as a deployment mode, it operates as a layer two. So essentially it's a bump in the wire as opposed to uh, rooted mode, which is uh, operating in layer three. So what this means is um, you don't need to assign an IP address aside from the management IP address um, to the device. So this makes it easier to uh, place a firewall or place the FTD device into an existing network without uh, disrupt disrupting the existing infrastructure. Whereas a layer 3 uh, firewall you would need to uh, accommodate additional IP addresses for each interface. So as I said only a management IP address exists. You can assign IP addresses to the uh, bridge virtual interfaces Physical and virtual devices support uh, transparent deplo deployment, so you can, um, if you do have access to virtual FTDs and FMCs, you can do this yourself as well. Um, and likewise, if you've got physical equipment, you can also make use of uh, the deployment mode, transparent mode. In order to change the deployment mode, you must first remove it from an FMC. So if it's managed, if you've got an FTD um, that's being managed by an FMC, so a Firepower Management Center, you first need to remove that um, or those managers before you can uh, proceed with changing the mode. And this is not just for changing it to transparent, this is also changing it to uh, rooted mode as well if you're going down that route. Transparent mode deployments require the FMC. So 
when deploying transparent mode, you cannot locally manage uh, that device. And by that, I mean you need to use an FMC to manage um, a device that is deployed in transparent mode. So you can't use the uh, local onbox manager, which is the Firepower device manager. Deployment modes, they can only be changed in the CLI, so you can't do this on the GUI, so whether that be FMC, uh, FDM, um, you need to do this on the CLI. So you do that by connecting to the management um, IP address over SSH or console, whatever it may be, and um, you can change that mode there. And that's something that we're going to look at in the upcoming lab shortly. Transparent can block traffic in line, so if you deploy a uh, FTD device in line um, and transparent, you can block traffic, however, if it's acting as a transparent passive um, device or if it's in passive, you're not going to be able to uh, block traffic, so you know, it acts as more of an IDS um, sort of thing. Traffic generated from the FTD is done so via the bridge virtual interfaces and not the physical interface or the interfaces. And last of all, if dynamic routing is used, it's best to trust or fast path um, using pre-filter policies um, this, this type of traffic, so not to inspect it. And this is just because it puts an extra burden on, on the device. So that was a quick overview of the main points that I jotted down um, as I was going through the content. Um, now what we're going to take a look at is how to actually configure uh, transparent mode and add the device to the Firepower Management Center. So just before we do that, the steps um, are as followed on your screen. So I've got five steps. Basically what you need to do is connect to the FTD device via the management IP. Then you need to remove any managers that are already configured. Then you need to configure transparent mode. Then configure the managers again, which is the FMCs. And then last of all, you need to add the managed devices or devices to be managed to the FMC. So for our demonstration today, we have um, a firepower device here which is sat in between um, two routers so you've got router 3 and router 2 for the purpose of this demonstration not all the equipment is actually running and live as you can see um, we're also not going to be using the uh, management machine directly however we will have access to a uh, machine whereby we can access the FMC which is located at uh, this address here. So we're essentially configuring transparent mode and we're joining um, the FTD to the FMC. So with that, let's switch over now to the uh, CLI of the FTD device. And let's begin. So first of all, we want to have a look and see if any managers are configured. So we would do show managers. And we can see that we have a manager configured. So what we need to do is we need to remove um, the manager before we can proceed. So to do that, we do configure manager delete. And that should delete any managers on this device. And we can verify that with the show managers command once this um, has been processed. So depending on resources, etc., um, it may take a minute, so just be patient with it and don't think that it's crashed or reconnecting or anything like that. You're simply moving the FMC uh, from 
the FTD device. So you can see there now that the managers successfully deleted. So what we'll do again is we'll do show managers. And we can see now that no managers are configured, which is good. Now what we want to do is we want to configure the firewall so that it's in transparent mode as a deployment mode rather than ruid. So we'll do configure firewall. And if we look at the options, we can see we've got two deployment modes here. So we've got rooted, which is the layer free traditional way of uh, firewalling, if you like. And then we've got transparent mode. So we're going to go ahead and go with transparent. So you can see there that it gives us a prompt that says this will destroy any current interface configurations. Are you sure you want to proceed? So we're going to go ahead and press yes for that. And we can see that the firewall mode has successfully been changed. Now what we want to do is we want to add that back now to or, or configure a FMC as a manager. So what we'll do is we'll do configure manager add. And what we can do is we can configure the IP address if known, whether that be IPv6 IPv4 um, and the host name um, or if we don't know the address then we can use a dot resolve with uh, four, four devices that are behind the NAT. For us we already know the IP address so we're going to go with the IPv4 address which in our case is 192.168.110.250 and now we should be asked for a key. So this can be uh, any key alphanumeric between 2 and 36 characters. So for the purpose of this demonstration, we'll just go with the Cisco all in lower case. That will be processed and we should be, um, we should be prompt once the configuration has been applied to the FTD. Again, we just give it a few minutes. So we can see now that the manager has successfully been configured and we are asked to make a note of the registration key, which in our case uh, was, was Cisco, uh, because we'll need that when we're adding the device to the FMC. So now if we do show managers, we should see that configuration that we've just put in and we can see that the registration status is uh, pending at the minute. So what that means is we haven't added it to the uh, FMC yet. So what we'll do now, we'll go ahead and we'll uh, flip over to the FMC because that's our configuration done on the FTD and we'll attempt to add this device to the FMC. So we have the FMC open here. So to add a device to the FMC, we go to Devices, Device Management. And what we need to do is we need to add device and the host is the IP address. So my host of the so the management IP address of the FTD is 172.16.1.5. Uh, I believe it is. We can change the display name. Uh, let's call this one transparent firewall. Our registration key was Cisco, all in lowercase. We'll just give it a default, default access control policy which has already been configured. If you are doing this for the first time, you may not have any access control policies configured, so you will need to create one. Again, with group, we'll leave that as none. And we'll um, assign, let's just say for instance, a malware license. We don't need to use the advanced unique NAT ID feature. Again, that's for devices that are behind um, behind NAT uh, devices. 
So what they'll do, um, we'll leave transfer packets, which is ticked by default, that enables the communication between the uh, two devices, the FMC and the um, FTD. And we'll go ahead now and we'll register. So we'll give this a few minutes. And we should start to see this change. So it started the registration now for this transparent device or transparent firewall as we call it. And now we can see that the uh, device registration is now completed and it's going to reload. So we can see that our device 172.16.1.5 has been now added. We can see now that it's registering the device and that will that process should take a couple of minutes to uh, complete before um, it's it's finished and that is simply how you add a device to the FMC once configured for transparent mode so again thank you for watching um, I've got a few useful links here uh, that you may make use of. I will add them in the video description at the end. And as I say, the main purpose is to uh, discuss CCIE topics as we go through uh, the different parts of the blueprint. So please do join me again where we uh, may look a little bit further into transparent firewalls and how we can actually configure the interfaces themselves as, as BVIs and uh, so forth. But until then, thank you for watching.